Hello, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us today for our session on sustainability and green ops with Google Cloud. My name is Lauren, and I'm the content manager for the Google Cloud community. Joining us today are several members from the Google Cloud technical account management team who will be taking us through the session content and answering your questions. Questions are encouraged, so please feel free to add those into the YouTube chat box, and we'll be sure to get to them either in the chat or at the end of the presentation. And for any questions that we aren't able to address or get to live, we'll answer them in a recap post, which will be um, posted in the Google Cloud community. And a link to that is in the YouTube description. We'll also be sharing resources throughout this presentation in the YouTube chat box, but no worries. We'll also be including those in the recap post as well. So without any uh, further delay, I will hand it over to the team to take us through the session today. Thanks, Lauren. And hello, everyone. Welcome to our webinar on sustainability with Google Cloud. It's great to have you all here today and to join us as we share more about this ever important topic. Before we get started, a quick hello from your presenters today. Uh, my name is Nikolai Donko. I am one of our sustainability practice leads based in EMEA. With me, I've also got Militza and Kulan, who will be joining us later on. Um, as we go through today's session. In terms of our content for today, uh, our agenda is going to cover a few different sections. We're first going to start by setting the scene on sustainability and its growing importance in the tech industry. We're then going to share more on Google's commitments to sustainability and talk a bit about our own sustainability journey, why we're working with our major partners to now achieve our own targets. We're also going to talk about how Google has been harnessing the power of technology, big data, machine learning, and AI to build sustainable operations. We're going to switch our focus after that to Google Cloud Platform and how we've been building a cloud platform that helps all of our customers um, meet their sustainability goals. That's with reporting requirements, reducing their carbon footprint, and the environmental impact of their business. And finally, we'll leave you with some calls to action and some steps that you can take from today to start achieving some of your own sustainability goals. And just to get us in the right frame of mind for today's session, here on the right-hand side, you will see a picture of our data center in Hamina, Finland. This data center operates on carbon-free energy for over 90% of its operating time. That's an incredibly high number and an incredible achievement. The data center itself is a reused old paper mill. So we've tried to avoid creating a carbon footprint by building a new data center. And on top of that, we use seawater uh, as this old paper mill is just by the coast to help with cooling our machines and the data center infrastructure as well another way we're looking at reducing our carbon footprint from our data centers. So with that in mind, let's think about setting the scene and why this is so important. Now, we're not gonna cover a huge amount on the environmental impacts as I'm sure we're all aware of what we're facing. This is a pivotal decade in the, faith, in the fight for climate change and we're seeing more and more news stories every year about extreme climate events, such as heat waves, droughts, melting ice caps, and more. Many experts agree that we have 10 years left at most to try and chart a sustainable course for our planet. And this is bringing together groups of people motivated to solving this challenge together. Consumers, investors, governments, NGOs are all increasingly motivated to solve this challenge. When we look at consumers, they're expressing stronger preferences for using sustainable products. Um, and that's 80% of consumers that would change their purchasing behaviors if it was due to environmental impact alone. Investment is flowing to brands with environmental purpose and environmental, social and governance investments are becoming an increasingly integral part of investment portfolios. European leaders are coming together to strive to become the first climate neutral content, continent and leading companies are committing to an environmental purpose 
Thousands of organizations have signed commitments to meeting science-based targets set in the Paris Climate Accords, and hundreds of businesses have already committed to 100% renewable energy. So against that backdrop, let's look at what's happening closer to home within our industry. Well, data centers consume nearly 1% of the world's electricity, and the IT industry is quite rightly a major focus for reducing emissions. 89% of developers would make a more sustainable data center option choice if they had that available to them. So as more and more companies embark on digital transformation strategies, IT decision makers are increasingly bringing sustainability into assessment criteria. In a recent survey commissioned by IDC and Google Cloud, IT leaders highlighted sustainability as a critical consideration when evaluating cloud providers. This is amongst other important factors, such as multi-cloud strategies, big data and analytics. And with sustainability highlighted as a leading indicator, the company of the future needs to prioritize environmental responsibility across its operations. However, despite the intent, we still see a gap in action. IT leaders display, displayed strong signals for sustainable IT efforts, nearly 90% in fact. However, despite the intent, few departments have translated this into targets. So while sustainability is a must-have criteria, there are other factors it has to be weighed up against, including dates of sovereignty, multi-cloud capabilities, security concerns. And when we have these competing priorities, sustainability is often dropped from and seen as a nice to have option. So in order for us to have a more scalable impact, cloud providers are taking steps to help customers make sustainable choices in an easier way throughout the design, build and operation of cloud workloads. Moving into our next section, we'd like to talk a little bit about Google's own sustainability journey and our own green pledges. Now, before we dive into that, we're gonna come across some terms that will uh, be used throughout the next few sections. So to quickly recap what these mean, carbon neutral means that carbon dioxide released into the atmosphere from a company's operations and activities is balanced by an equivalent amount being removed. When we talk about renewable energy, we're talking about sources such as sunlight, wind, rain, tides, waves, and geothermal heat. And the electricity that is used is matched with renewable energy purchases. Finally, carbon-free is when the average percentage of carbon-free energy consumed in a particular location on an hourly basis takes into account the investments that are made into carbon-free energy in that location. So with that in mind, I'd like to turn it over to a very quick video that's available on YouTube about Google's own sustainability journey.
So in that great two minute video that sums up a couple of decades of our own sustainability journey, you'll see that as a company, we offer services to billions of users every single day and reliable electricity supply for, to our data centers is the fuel that enables all of us to enjoy search results, emails, YouTube videos, Google Cloud Platform services, and much more. The emissions associated with our own electricity consumption have comprised the majority of our carbon footprint. Now, as you saw in that video, a few milestones to call out. In 2007, we became the first company to go carbon neutral, offsetting as much of our carbon as our operations had generated. However, we didn't stop there. And because of the urgency of the climate challenge, we had a bigger and bolder vision. That's why we announced the first of its kind target to achieve 24 by seven carbon free energy by 2030. But we can't do that alone. The way we've done this is by issuing green bonds. And in 2020, this was issued to raise investment in green projects that could help accelerate our progress towards the 2030 goal. The idea here is that many of these sustainability projects can be developed, improved, and in time reused by wider society to help reduce overall carbon emissions. The 2030 target is incredibly ambitious, and that's why Google is now starting to increasingly focus on scope three emissions as well, defining sustainability standards for all of the suppliers and partners we work with too. So when we think specifically about Google Cloud, we're committed to running the cleanest cloud in the industry. Now we can leverage all of those data center developments that we've been speaking about um, and since 2017, we've been using 100% renewable energy sources. We were the first cloud provider to do that. What's great about our own sustainability strategy, it's a great example of what we call greening by IT. We've used many innovative solutions, technology solutions, and embedded them into our own operations to improve uh, our decision making and how we operate our own infrastructure. And a perfect example of this is our Google data centers. Um, our Google data centers are twice as efficient as the industry average for enterprise data centers. What does this mean for customers when you're using Google Cloud? Well, if you want to host or build an application, you're taking advantage of the same operational playbooks so you know that sustainability has been at the core of this, the design and operation of that data center. And how have we been able to do this? Well, one of the ways, one of the many ways we've been able to do this is using machine learning and AI. And that's played a huge part in the way that we run the data centers today. When we apply this to our data center operations, we were able to increase the rate of energy savings from 10% to 30%. You can see that as these two lines intersect on the screen in front of you. With more data, our models have adapted to changes in environment without the need to reprogram the control systems within our data centers. It's a great example of how we're using this technology to try and solve for sustainability challenges. And that's why we really see there being two key phases of the sustainability journey for organizations. The first level is greening of IT. That means reducing the immediate impact of IT operations and lowering the associated emissions. For example, using data centers that use less carbon intensive energy sources. Greening by IT is where organizations start to use IT innovation to reimagine solutions and apply them in a sustainable way to business challenges. So thinking 10x, using that technology in a much more powerful way. And when we start to look at the cloud maturity curve around sustainability, we start to think of some core activities that fall into these two phases. When we think of greening of IT, 
we think of understanding what your current carbon footprint looks like with on-prem data centers and your uh, equipment and devices. Moving forward, once you start to think about cloud native application, it's a way to uh, reduce that carbon footprint and progressing towards data center exits reduces that even further, relying, for example, on cloud platforms to, to deliver your infrastructure. But in the greening by IT phase, we start to see how we're leveraging the solutions themselves, data, ML, for example, to progress towards zero net emissions in its entirety. So with that in mind, I'm going to hand over to Milita to talk to you about how Google Cloud can help you to become more green. Thanks, Nikolai. OK, so the first step uh, to reducing carbon emissions is to understand and to report your usage in line with common reporting requirements. And here we've got you covered. So if you uh, are already working with Google Cloud Platform, you've probably became familiar with our console already. Uh, with the uh, growing requirements for environmental, social and governance reporting, companies are looking for ways to show their employees, boards and customers their progress against climate targets. So in 2021, we launched Carbon Footprint, and this is a free in-console product that provides customers the carbon emissions associated with their cloud usage. Carbon Footprint lets you measure, track, and report uh, on the carbon emissions associated with the electricity of your cloud usage. And as we work to fully decarbonize our cloud operations on a 24 by 7 basis by 2030, our customers can leverage this data for reporting as well as internal audits and carbon reduction efforts. Uh, this is uh, built in collaboration with our customers like HSBC, L'Oreal and Atos. And our carbon footprint reporting introduces a new level of transparency to support customers in meeting their climate goals. You can also monitor your cloud emissions over time by project, by product and also by region. This gives IT teams and developers metrics that can help reduce your carbon footprint. In the green up section later, uh, Kulan will uh, explain something more about the basic terms that help us calculate this data. So while uh, this digital uh, infrastructure emissions are just one part of the environmental footprint, uh, accurately accounting for carbon emissions is necessary to measure progress against the carbon reduction targets. And this is required to avert the worst consequences of the climate change that we are all facing. So to help our customers account for emissions beyond the cloud uh, and across their organizations, we've also partnered with Salesforce Sustainability Cloud, integrating our Google Cloud emissions data into their carbon accounting platform. It is also worth noting that understanding your carbon footprint, uh, while important, is just a first step. So uh, what is even more important is how you can reduce it. And let's take a look at how we can help you do that. First, uh, you can keep in mind that just by using Google Cloud Services, uh, you're already carbon neutral. So all of the Google Cloud services are carbon neutral. And by migrating from on-premise to GCP, you will already see a 100% net reduction in data center emissions. We also have several uh, features which are embedded in our console. Uh, the first of them being Active Assist. And our Active Assist feature provides sustainability recommendations. So starting with GCP's unattended project recommender, uh, this provides users an estimate of their cross carbon emission savings based on removing idle resources from the cloud. We also have a few features related to region optimization. So if your business model allows you to be flexible in terms of where you run your workloads, uh, these features will help you choose a region with the most carbon free energy usage. Also, uh, we've made our carbon-free energy data uh, in the form of average hourly carbon-free energy percentage across uh, uh, our GCP regions public. 
So uh, you uh, and all of our customers can account for sustainability factors when considering which regions to deploy in. So uh, you can use this, for example, to pick a cleaner region for new applications, uh, for running batch jobs on the cleanest option, or you can even set organizational policy for clean regions and do so by restricting location of your resources to a particular Google Cloud region or a subset of regions. And let's take a closer look at how we use the carbon-free um, carbon energy percentage metric. So this metric is calculated every hour and it tells us what percentage of energy that we consume during an hour is carbon free. And this is based on two elements. The first one is the generation feeding the grid at that time. So which power plants are running. And the second one is Google attributed clean energy produced onto that grid uh, at that time. So uh, what we do is we aggregate the average available uh, hourly CFE percentage for each Google Cloud region uh, for that year. And this data is available both in our documentation. So you can check out by region, uh, carbon free energy percentage, and also Google's net operational greenhouse gases emissions. Uh, and it's also available on GCP GitHub page. So you can account for uh, carbon free energy when planning infrastructure deployment. In order to hit our 2030 target, uh, each Google Cloud region will be supplied by a mix of more and more carbon-free energy and less and less fossil-based energy. And uh, if you see here a lower scoring region, this means that more hours in a year uh, are uh, there without matching local amount of carbon-free energy. Um, you can also see some links here, and I guess Lauren will provide them in the chat soon. Okay, let's talk a bit more about our Google Cloud Region Picker tool. So uh, the Google Cloud Region Picker tool helps customers uh, pick a Google Cloud Region for applications, uh, considering these factors, carbon footprint, data locality, price, and latency. So what, what this means, uh, in a very similar vein to our CFE data, Customers can now consider sustainability in their region strategy using these four levers. Um, the region picker will recommend top few regions based on, on these areas. And you can see the example on the right. Okay, uh, another tool uh, in our set uh, is Active Assist. Uh, it, within Active Assist, we're not only focusing on cost, security, and performance. Uh, we have a new pillar uh, in our Active Assist mission, and that is sustainability. Uh, this is helping us taking the first step towards proactively helping Google Cloud customers to reduce the carbon footprint of their workloads uh, with these recommendations. So starting with GCP's unattended project recommender, Users can estimate their gross carbon emission savings based on removing idle resources from the cloud. Uh, machine learning will identify projects that are likely abandoned based on, uh, for example, API or network activity, uh, your billing or usage of other cloud services. Uh, and this will not only help you become more sustainable, but also save you some costs. And now I'll hand over to Kulan, who will talk a bit more about the frameworks we use to support our customers and specifically green ops. Cool. Hi, everyone. Um, so I'll take over from here. Um, so with green ops, our goal is to provide every IT expert with the right approach and tools to build and run in the cloud for a sustainable feature. And green ops is essentially all about carbon aware engineering and operations culture. And it has three main sections. So the first phase is essentially understand. What this means is understanding how the carbon footprint of data centers is measured, um, understanding the requirements and services for the applications and cloud services aspects, and understanding the emissions drivers and the relations to one another. 
um, second uh, part actually covers um, how do we actually measure, right? So measuring not only the carbon footprint of your workload, but also measuring um, resource usage across time, project, service, and region. Um, and lastly, we cover optimize. Um, so that's probably the most important part as well. So um, Optimize um, is all about like implementing the right strategies in your engineering work to optimize for carbon footprint. And there are several optimization strategies, um, as you can see on the right hand side here, with varying degrees of effort, cost and carbon savings. Um, generally, there are strategies that lead to overall reduction of resource consumption, but also lower costs, while others may actually like increase costs in favor of lower CO2 footprint. Um, the idea is not just to follow these strategies, but also measure the reduction in carbon footprint before and after you implement these changes. So then you can directly measure the impact um, you know, you're having on your organization reaching its sustainability goals. Um, and then also like championing the knowledge and culture in your organization. Next slide, please. Thank you. Um, so here I would like to cover the Green uh, Software Foundation principles. So Green Software Foundation has great diverse sort of foundational principles that explain the relationship between software engineering and sustainability. And let's go through these eight principles. So carbon efficiency means that we want to build applications and systems that are carbon efficient. That is the overall goal. And in most of the cases, this goes hand in hand with the second principle, which is electricity efficiency. Uh, because if we build applications that are that you know that use electricity sorry that use electricity efficiently, they are also normally more carbon efficient. Um, the other aspect is regional one. Um, electricity is different in every region, which brings us to the third principle, which is carbon intensity. The fourth principle uh, deals with embodied carbon. Whenever we run application that is hardware and where there is hardware involved. Um, Sorry, whenever we run an application, there, there's a hardware involved. And that hardware was manufactured and the manufacturing process has produced carbon pollution as well as disposal. Um, energy proportionality is the fifth principle here. Um, and that's an important one. We should leverage the hardware we use in the most efficient way. And this is impacted by the utilization of an underlying hardware, meaning CPU power consumption to utilization ratio. The network plays an important role in creating um, carbon emissions, but also, um, it's the hardest one to measure, essentially. Um, therefore, reducing the amount of data and the distance it travels is a really good approach. Uh, demanding, uh, sorry, demand shaping addresses the goal to more workloads into regions of time or times where the carbon intensity is low. And the eighth principle is laying the groundwork for consistent measurement and optimization. Next slide, please. So some basic terms. Um, so let's talk a bit more in detail about the measures and units of carbon emissions. So the final number that we want to reduce is carbon emissions, which is commonly measured in gram um, carbon dioxide equivalent, according to the green ga greenhouse gas protocol. The equivalent aspect is due to the fact that there are many gases in, that impact the climate and all of them have individually strong effects. So this is um, why other gases are being recalculated into equivalent of impact in CO2. Generally, this can also include um, water vapor, methane, nitrous oxide, and, um, and more. The next number and unit is the carbon intensity of the grid, which is measured in ground carbon dioxide equivalent per kilowatt um, hour. Uh, that allows us to calculate electricity consumption measured in kilowatt hour into carbon emissions. And the last group and unit is about the actual services being consumed that ultimately go down to the consumed amount of CPU, memory, storage, and network. Next slide, please. So now that we cover the basics, uh, let's take a look into um, how we have worked with other customers to reduce environmental impact of their businesses. So uh, here, um, on top of like greening of IT, um, which is essentially like GreenOps approach, we have helped customers with greening by IT with solutions that address plastic packaging, resource uh, sourcing sustainable materials and building efficient routes. And as an example here, um, UPS. So UPS delivers around 21 million packages in more than 220 countries every day. 
Um, and working basically with us, with Google Cloud, UPS was able to design routing software that tells the delivery driver exactly where to go step by step, very efficiently. And the software saved um, UPS like $400 million a year and reduced fuel consumption by 10 million gallons a year. And that's just an example of like how customers are innovating on GCP, um, which is often actually tied to also cost savings. Um, next example, um, if you go to the next slide. Oh, there, there was like an, also an example with National Geographic, uh, which I'll send you an article about that later. Um, and here um, I wanted to cover, so if you're a cloud architect or an engineer, um, what can you do? Um, the best thing is for you to understand the carbon footprint associated with your cloud workloads and test greening strategies to reduce your emissions. Um, let's say if you're a PM, uh, design and build carbon aware applications would reduce CO2 footprint and take your users on a sustainability journey and design products like UPS did, for example. Um, next slide, please. Cool, so I know this was a lot of information today, uh, so we'll be sharing all these resources with you after the session, and I'll hand over to Lauren. Amazing, thank you all so much for this amazing presentation and content. Uh, thank you everyone for joining us. Here are just a few quick links for you before we jump into the Q&A. Um, so first at that top is the Google Cloud community. So that's where we'll be posting the recap for this session, including the recording, key takeaways, and written Q&A. So if you're not already a member, I uh, really encourage you to check that out and stay up to date and to have conversations with Googlers and each other around green ops, sustainability, and all things Google Cloud. And then that second link is a feedback form. So we'd love to hear from you if you enjoyed this, if you want to see other topics, other sessions, we'd love to hear from you in that form. And then lastly, just a few other events that we have coming up, if you're interested around um, accelerating developer velocity, organizational success, and uh, cross optimization. So um, you can check that out at those links there. Okay. Without any further ado now, we'll get into your questions. So we did receive some that were pre-submitted. So we'll start with those. And then um, thank you for those that are in the chat. We'll also be sure to address those. So we want to go to the next couple of slides here. We'll kick it off. So our first question is, apart from CO2 emissions, how does Google or Google Cloud help its customers to be environmentally friendly? Thanks, Lauren. I will take this one. So. Uh, what we can do here is recap what we've mentioned earlier. So uh, our journey towards a sustainable cloud involves two ambition levels. And the first one is greening of IT and then greening by IT. So in the first one, uh, with greening of IT, which means reducing the immediate impact of IT operations and lowering the associated emissions. Uh, and as we mentioned, on average, Google Cloud uh, data center is twice as energy efficient as a typical enterprise data center. And apart from the CO2 emissions, we are having a lot of different efforts. Uh, for example, one big part of it uh, is implementing different strategies in terms of circular economy. First one is maintain. So we're maintaining all of the equipment with the goal to get more life out of every single material that we have in our data centers. The second one is to refurbish. Once we verify that all of the data has been removed, uh, our decommissioned servers take a second lap in their circle of life and they're dismantled into separate, separate components. Uh, CPU, hard drives, etc. And after they're inspected and prepped, uh, they can be used uh, as a refurbished inventory. Uh, these refurbished parts are used to build remanufactured servers, uh, which can have performance equivalent to brand new machines. The third part uh, of our circular economy strategy is to reuse. Uh, so Google does quarterly evaluations and redistributes the data center's commercially useful access component inventory. Um, some unused components that are wiped clean uh, and checked multiple times uh, before they're released uh, for resale on the secondary market. And the last one uh, would be recycle. So not all of the components uh, can be sold or reused. And these ones undergo a multi-step destruction process uh, before they're sent to our recycling partner. 
another big part of, of our uh, responsibility and, and becoming more green uh, is to use water responsibly. So as Nicola already mentioned, our data centers use a lot of water for cooling. Uh, however, we uh, are trying to use it responsibly whenever we're using. And this includes alternatives like uh, like, like uh, wastewater whenever possible, industrial water, even seawater, as you saw with the Finland example. So what we do uh, is also utilize reclaimed water in more uh, than 25% of our data center campuses. Um, and uh, we remain committed uh, to investing in new technologies which would reduce both the energy and water consumption even further. Uh, as an example for that, we're currently developing new cooling solutions, uh, which would include a new a low water alternative uh, that can reduce data centers water use as much as 50% while still uh, preserving our energy efficiency. Uh, that being said, uh, the second goal uh, or the second ambition level that we've mentioned is greening by IT, which means using IT innovation to reimagine solutions uh, and business models and this kind of 10x thinking that we've mentioned to become more sustainable. Um, one example of this is that different Google products enable uh, a lot of users worldwide to find routes or flights uh, with the least amount of emissions. Uh, secondly, our hardware that is being sold, for example, Pixel phones, uh, all use uh, recycled materials and can be recycled. Uh, and uh, also uh, thinking specifically of cloud, there are many customer stories uh, where the customers have used platform uh, to become more sustainable. Uh, one of my favorite example was uh, using high volume drone images uh, and training machine learning models to help farmers reduce their crop loss. Amazing. On that note, talking about AI and machine learning, we do have a question um, around that that I think makes sense to address. Um, do you have any examples? I know you just mentioned one, but on how data AI ML has improved sustainability and are there any things that uh, customers can do with these tools to help make their infrastructure better as well? So I can name one, one example from our data centers. So for our own workloads uh, in the data centers, we are using AI to use the regions with the most uh, carbon-free energy at that point of time. So we are scheduling workloads uh, as, as it works with the, with the most sustainable energy. Awesome. Okay. Yeah, maybe maybe another example just to add to that, Lauren. So um, I, I work with a newspaper publisher here in the UK. Um, and I think obviously this, the opportunities to become more sustainable differ from company to company, industry to industry. Uh, but one example that they've used in, in terms of um, using machine learning uh, to, to be more sustainable is in distributing their newspapers every day. So they built a, built a newspaper distribution model. Um, it took them about 12 months to, to build that and to perfect it, but they fed it with different data sources, everything from the weather that day to um, train delays, for example, at, at different stations. Um, and they used that to try and optimize the number of newspapers they actually printed uh, day on day. Um, and in, obviously printing newspapers is incredibly um, uh, carbon intensive um, and requires a, a lot of energy to, to do every single day. Um, but that's one example of, of how that industry has leveraged ML to, to become more green. Love it, great examples. Okay, um, so our next question um, from those that were pre-submitted, if we can just go to the next slide. So if a business was only going to do one thing towards their sustainability goal, what should that thing be? Oh, this is a difficult one. Um, so it's very difficult to recommend just one thing uh, as we all work 
as a part of different systems. And uh, if we were to focus on just recommending one thing, uh, we would go a bit philosophical and say, make the sustainable choice the easier one. Um, and you can work with this strategy in mind to implement it both internally, but also throughout the whole value chain uh, with your suppliers, partners, and with the customers. And in terms of Google Cloud, uh, what you can do is start with low effort initiatives, uh, which would lead to both positive CO2 impact and also positive commercial impact for you. Um, the, some of the easy ones would be optimizing your storage strategy, removing idle resources, or scheduling shutdown of the resources when they're not in use. Um, as Kulan mentioned in the green ops part, uh, our methodology goes in a way that we first recommend understanding uh, your emissions and your business needs, uh, then measuring uh, what your emissions are, and then working on optimization. Love it. All right. Um, so what are some lessons uh, you have learned that would help other entities reduce their carbon footprint? Yeah, I can tell you this one. All right. So I think we've worked with a variety of customers that are, are looking at this and, and have wanted to reduce their carbon footprint. I think some key takeaways from all of those interactions, understand what your goals are what's possible and what's not possible. Um, it's not going to be possible to completely eliminate your, your carbon footprint. So, so, so think about that and be pragmatic about that. Um, reducing your carbon footprint uh, has to be weighed up against other business requirements. And, and I think I saw a question around this as well in, that's come in, but it's not always going to be practical to take the, the, the green approach or your application requirements or your business requirements. So understand what strategies can be adopted, what can't be adopted. Um, in some cases, taking the greener option is going to be more expensive. Unfortunately, that is the reality we have, we have today. Um, but hopefully as we drive, or companies like Google drive towards the 2030 targets, then that should all hopefully equal out. Um, exec support is always key. Um, align your company's sustainability strategy um, and, and align with that. But engineers also need to be empowered to take on the challenge as well. Um, and think about the green ops life cycle. So understand, measure, optimize that we've currently walked through. Um, that will help you to baseline and to make continuous improvements over and over again. Um, and then finally, think about low-hanging fruits. So the recommendations API offers some quick and easy ways to take action and understand what your percent potential savings would be. Um, and I think I saw another question in the chat about how you can get hold of Active Assist and the recommendation API. Um, that's available to, to customers that have a support package and, and you can then leverage all of the recommendations from within the console itself. Awesome. Yep. We did you covered a few questions in one. So that's great. I would just um, maybe surface this one on FinOps and GreenOps as well to see if, you know, if you have any additional context to what you just said, but I think it is addressing that um, there may be some balances there between spend and reducing um, your carbon footprint and, and practicing green ops um, best practices. So I know you just covered that a little bit, but any additional uh, context or information you want to share on this? Um, I mean, my thoughts, and I'll open up to Kula and Milita to also share as well. I think, generally speaking, being, being green, taking the more sustainable uh, option of running your infrastructure does also mean reducing the reducing wastage, right? Turning down VMs and and um, and resources that you're not using, or resizing resources so you only pay for what you're using. In that way, FinOps and GreenOps are very closely linked, um, which is great. Um, but there is unfortunately this kind of gray area where some of the green ops principles and techniques that you can use uh, don't necessarily give you the cheapest option in terms of, of running your infrastructure. So that is something to, to, 
to watch out for. Um, as always, use whatever you can in terms of modeling. So pricing calculators, carbon calculators, for example, to get an idea. Also use small test environments to identify um, what that might look like. I would like to also add one aspect to this. So one important aspect of FinOps is giving engineers the tools to understand costs and to understand how their work that they're doing is causing some of the costs. And what we're trying to do with GreenOps is also to enable uh, the engineering teams to make sustainable decisions wherever possible. So I think this aspect of uh, uh, giving uh, education and tools to make better decisions uh, works uh, within both frameworks. Love it. Yep. Makes good sense. Um, now about those kind of practices, there is a question um, that might be relevant here is does choosing a further CFE data center, um, you know, will that affect the latency of my cloud services? Well, uh, possibly, yeah, uh, it depends. Uh, so uh, what we mentioned earlier is there is a tool uh, called Region Picker where you can play and see uh, on different levers. And one of those levers is where your data is coming from. So for example, if you're some located somewhere in Europe, then data center in Finland would be a good option. Uh, but if you're located somewhere else and have some other aspects that are important to you, then the region picker tool will probably recommend some other data center or region, sorry. Makes sense. And that uh, resource is here now on the screen and also in the chat. Um, okay. So going on to our next pre-submitted question, I think we just have a couple more here. How can Google Cloud customers be more sustainable by using the cleanest cloud in the industry? What makes Google differentiated when it comes to sustainability compared to other cloud service providers? I will also take this one. Okay, so let's split this in, into two questions. And I will address the first one uh, now. Um, so as we already mentioned, when you're using GCP, you're already net neutral. And then the next step would be to implement one of the green up strategies that we've mentioned, uh, or to uh, take a look at the active assist recommendations that you're getting. So what we also are offering are some industry specific solutions that help our customers become more sustainable. And uh, Nikolai already uh, talked a bit more about his specific customer in publishing industry. But there is also a lot of examples uh, where we're ha helping, for example, CPG and retail companies. Um, we're helping them with optimizing their supply chains um, by, by reimagining sourcing. So sourcing from raw materials uh, and those materials are tracked by the earth engine throughout the manufacturing process and bringing those products to the end customers. And these companies are also leveraging GCP products to predict their demand and optimize assortment that they have. Um, what we see uh, within financial services, uh, they are benefiting from extracting and uh, providing access to climate and ESG related data sets, uh, going deeper uh, and gaining some, some insights and also distributing and sharing uh, all of the data sets uh, where others can also collaborate uh, within these data sets. Our energy and utility customers, they are using their data to optimize uh, their infrastructure, to optimize their water usage and also increase transparency. And we are also seeing uh, a lot of interest in public sector for using geospatial data to understand and monitor climate changes. So I hope this gives you some ideas. Um, you can read a lot of these uh, case studies in more detail online. So uh, if we go to the second question, uh, again, a, a bit of repetition here. Uh, I would like to mention that we were the first company of our scale uh, to have completely carbon neutral operations uh, since 2007 and we were also the first one to achieve 
100% renewable energy for operations uh, in 2017. Um, what also makes us different is a set of tools and services which are unique to Google, uh, such as Earth Engine, Google Maps, our machine learning models, uh, our experts, and the marketplace with partner ecosystem and data sources. So uh, you can use uh, these uh, to their uh, to, to your advantage to innovate and improve uh, your existing solutions. Great, and uh, some of those customer stories that you mentioned and others um, are now being added to the chat, so you can pick those out um, at your own convenience. Um, and I know you covered it, but we did get a question around uh, public sector, so. Um, there's any other context you want to share there, or we can always follow up um, in the in the recap post with more context around public sector as well. I would say we, we can follow up with the specific links to the case studies where you can read. Uh, these are all uh, exciting examples uh, where uh, cities and, and uh, the whole governments are using the products to understand climate change uh, and create better policies and also monitor what's happening. Awesome. Okay. I want to make sure we cover just the last couple uh, pre-submitted questions and then we'll get to yours in the chat. Thank you everyone for your questions. How can I add green ops to a reseller go-to-market strategy? Yeah, I can say this one, Lauren. So it's a great question. Um, and I think in reality, this is definitely something that partners and resellers can explore further. Um, we haven't seen a huge number of, of partners or resellers explore green ops with their customers yet. And that's a huge opportunity for us. Um, so more and more customers have sustainability targets and there's no reason why um, partners and resellers can't, can't, I guess, talk to those customers, engage on them on those, on those targets they need to meet and, and find out how uh, cloud can help them. Um, so I think if you want to speak to us, then I'd advise that you please get in contact with your partner representatives at, at Google Cloud, um, and they will be happy to help and, and put you in contact with the right teams in order to do that. Awesome. I love that. It can definitely be a differentiator. So um, great. Okay. I think one more question. How have the carbon footprint metrics evolved in recent months, uh, criteria, calculations, et cetera, and are they reliable? I'll take this question. Um, so we follow the greenhouse gas protocol carbon reporting standards and obviously continuously you know, work on improving our data quality. Uh, and I work personally with the GCP carbon footprint team and I can uh, assure you that always like thriving to do the best, they're striving to do the best for the environment and for the customer. Um, so the data, is reliable um, and you can monitor any changes to carbon footprint tool on the release notes um, and i'll put the also link in the chat and um, that also includes by the way the link um, the detailed reporting methodology that we use um, so you can actually read through like how everything is calculated um, just on a high level it's tied to your skus um, of your like workloads and yeah it's definitely one of the more advanced tools out there on the market um, and it's literally available for anyone who's using GCP. It's built into the tool. Um, and then I wanted to also mention that um, since the product launched GA in October last year, there have been like a couple of more changes. So definitely look at the release notes. Um, and also this year we'll be do adding more cool things, including carbon footprint for workspace. Um, so lots of fun stuff to come. Um, so yeah, stay tuned. Awesome. Yep, and we'll definitely um, make sure you have that link um, in the chat or in the in the recap post shortly. Okay, so one question we have here is um, what it looks like if a, a customer is using more than one cloud provider. So how can Google Cloud help be more sustainable when workloads are distributed across different cloud providers? Um, maybe I can take this question. Um, so if you're using AWS or Azure, they also have their own set of tools. Um, all of them have a bit of a different nuances. So they're measuring different things. They have different levels of granularity. So definitely like look more carefully into the different methodologies that each cloud service provider is using. Um, that's just one thing because one may be reporting 
in a different way to the other. So when you put the data together, it may not be matching up. Um, so what, the way we are helping is like, we can cover what is on GCP. There are some third party tools out there that can connect all of this three um, cloud providers together. Um, I think one of them is developed by ThoughtWorks, which is like a partner that we work with. Um, so definitely check that out. Um, the way we can help is like, if you use the GCP carbon footprint tool, you can essentially um, do BigQuery export and then like do a bit of a, maybe more manual work by exporting the other um, reports from the other cloud service providers to do that. Um, you can easily then use, I don't know, maybe Looker or some data studio to visualize the data. So that's one of the solutions. But as of now, like um, we don't obviously do um, multi-cloud reporting um, because we don't have access to the data on the other side. Um, so definitely it's a bit of a manual work or you can use third party tools. Makes sense. Okay. Um, so there may need a little bit more context around this question, but i um, asking it for the group if you um, know, if you understand, is your carbon calculator tool scoped one, two, and three, or just one and two? One, two, and three. Okay, thank you. Um, okay, my question is related to the console. Is there uh, a built-in KPI to measure carbon footprint against uh, consumption within the console? Um, what is the question? How are you understanding it, Nikolai and Millie? Um, I'm, I'm not too sure. So I, I guess, uh, Nishkar, maybe to answer your question, within the console itself, um, available to every customer is your carbon footprint for any projects that, or any billing accounts that you're running. Um, so within that console, um, you'll be able to generate that data, export that to BigQuery and explore it at, at your own leisure. Um, inbuilt KPIs, uh, we don't necessarily have any inbuilt KPIs. What we do have, I suppose, are certain data points that we can put in front of you th through things like the recommenders that allow you to identify ways to reduce your carbon footprint. So by moving to a different type of VM, for example, you'll be able to save this amount in carbon emissions. Hope that helps. Yeah, there are also like other um, things you can do, like setting policies for, like if someone is creating a project, um, they cannot create it in this region um, and things like that. So there's a set of other like optimization or like, um, foundational like, policies they can set. Um, so you don't, I guess we can measure, I mean, you can't really measure, but you can prevent from things happening. What, what you could also do uh, is check out which data is provided via the API. So you can play it, uh, play with it a bit and see what kind of KPIs make sense for your business. Awesome. Yeah. And there, it looks like there's just a clarifying comment around, I mean, target versus consumption, but I think um, your answers right there just uh, clarified that a little bit more and, and we'll be able to provide more context in the, in the blog post as well as the recap. Um, okay. I think we have time just for one more question. Um, but if you do have any others, please feel free to keep asking those and, and we'll be sure to cover them afterwards. Um, there was just a question around active assist, and I think Nikolai, you mentioned it, but if you don't mind just, um, reiterating the, the best, best way to learn more about active assist. Sure. Um, we do, we do actually have some really good documentation available online about active assist. So I recommend that as your, your starting point, Christine, um, take a look at that. Active Assist or the sustainability recommendations are part of the wider set of recommendations that we offer around cost and security, for example. So um, take a look at that and, and yeah, you'll be able to sort of like start to observe some potential ways to, to make some savings. I would also like to mention that we have a tour uh, or a course on, on our platform for learning that is called uh, Google Cloud Skills Boost, where you can see the different sustainability products. And this could be a good way to, to check out these products. And we can share a link. Awesome. 
Great. Well, that is all the time that we have uh, for today, but just wanted to say thank you so much, everyone, for joining us, uh, for all of your questions, and uh, everyone for presenting this information. Again, as a final reminder, we'll be sharing this in the community afterwards, so we'll stay in touch there until that's shared out, and we hope to see you all in our next session as well. Any closing thoughts from the team before we, we end today? I would just like to thank you all for, for great questions and making this session very interactive. And feel free to reach out to us on LinkedIn as well. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, thanks everyone. Appreciate it. Thanks, everyone. I uh, hope you have a good rest of your morning, day, evening, wherever you are in the world. And we hope to see you next time.